guys, welcome to another YouTube tutorial. My name is Lawson Luke. In this video, we'll be looking at PHP programming language, and a subject of discussion will be PHP data objects with prepaid statements. Now, I'm going to structure this tutorial in such a way that even if you're just beginning with the pro programming language, you can still follow along um, with this tutorial. Now, what is PDO? PDO is an acronym for PHP data objects. It is a lean and consistent way to access databases, and it helps you write fewer lines of code. Now, there are other methods uh, of writing PHP code, and that's um, one is the procedure. The procedure, for the most part, is what most people call the amateur way of writing PHP code. It is usually where most PHP developers begin from. Now, PDO has certain advantages. The first is that it allows for abstraction. Now, the goal of abstraction is to help handle complexity by hiding unnecessary details from the user. Now, imagine that you have written a very nice application using MySQL database, but then one day you or your company decide to switch to Postgre database. Now, you have a lot of mess replacements to make, like converting MySQL underscore connect or MySQL underscore connect to PG underscore connect, as well as replacing other functions that you used in running the queries and fetching the results. If you were using PDO, for instance, you would be okay by just changing a few parameters in the configuration file and then you're done. So that's one of the advantages of using PDO, is that it allows you to make um, certain abstractions without um, changing so much of um, the code that you've written. Other advantages that it allows for parameter binding. Parameter binding allows you to replace placeholders in your query with the value of a variable. Now, that brings us to something known as prepared statements. A prepared statement is a PHP feature that is used to execute SQL statements repeatedly with a great amount of efficiency. Now, this is how prepared statements work. Number one, an SQL statement template is created and prepared and it is sent off to the database where certain values are left unspecified. These values are usually called parameters and are denoted with a question mark. Next, the database passes, compiles and performs query optimizations and SQL statement templates and stores the results without even executing it. Then consequently, the values are bound to the parameters and the statement is executed by the database. The statement may be executed as many times as possible and with different parameters. Now, using prepared statements does have some advantages. The first advantage is that it reduces passing time because although the query preparation is done only once, the statements can be executed multiple number of times. Another advantage is that it is safer against SQL injections. With this method, you do not have to necessarily worry about escaping your strings and all because the original statement template is not derived from the external input. So these are the advantages of using PDO and prepared statements. So let's get into the coding part of it and see how all these explanations work out. This is your favorite um, editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code. So I already have my ZAMP open up here. Um, it's running here. I've got uh, the network running as well. I've got my volume mounted. I'm on a MacBook. So if you don't have ZAMP, go ahead and install it. Okay. And then when you install it, go to you can go to your htdocs folder here. Go to your htdocs folder and grab that folder that you will create and put um, inside here. I created one called PHP here. So in this PHP, I have login and I have our register um, file, which is what we are going to do. We're going to do a registration and a login form. I'm using prepared statements and with PDO. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to add that particular folder sitting in my htdocs to this workspace. So I'm going to click on add folder. I'm going to go right to where I have it, where it's sitting here, to my htdocs. So this is it here. I'm going to click on add. Okay, so I have this here in my workspace. Okay, so using image shortcuts, I'm going to um, just do this exclamation mark. And I have this placeholder right here for me. I want to change this type to to register. Next, I'm going to use Bootstrap. 
um, to create a very nice and form um, way easy because I think this is a very good library in case you want to try it out um, should look into it I guess we're going to use bootstrap for this tutorial so um, first let's click on get started so that we can get the dependencies I'm going to copy this dependency here you can see the CSS and the JavaScript dependency as well I'm going to copy the CSS first then I'll come right here and then you have to paste it within your head tag here so what I'll do is to paste this here then I'll come right back and copy the script but I don't necessarily need the script anyway because um, I'm not doing something really complex but I'm just going to copy it anyway um, for demonstration purpose so uh, we have this here <coughs> Excuse me. So what we can do, um, let's go to components, which you can see here, components, click on components. Now we're looking for a form component. So we'll click in forms. Um, so here you have all these already created out for you. What I can do, I'm gonna copy um, the one that has the grid, just say it in a bit. From grid, this one. So I just want to copy this here. So I'll just click and copy and come right here and paste it within the body. Now while I'm pasting the JavaScript down here so that the JavaScript components can load um, last or later after um, the file or the main thing is loaded. So JavaScript usually slows down um, the performance of the web page. So that's why I'm putting it below. So here I have this. So what I can do is save this. Um, Control S, you know, works nice and easy. So we'll come here and refresh and see what we have. As we can see, we have this um, written um, out for us here. Okay, so I'm displayed. So what we can do, um, I'll wrap this within a container. So that I can have a nice amount of easy space. So here, save this. And we can come back to refresh this here. Okay, so here we go. We have it. So then I'm just going to start it a little. Too. Um, so what I'll do here, I can just put um, a H2 tag here. Just call this register. Since I'm using Bootstrap, I'll just call um, class equals text hyphen center. This was I'm um, center the text here. And I'll save this and then we'll check out what we have. Yeah, so we have this and um, displayed for us. So I want to leave these parameters as the uh, um, uh, first name, last name. Um, I'm going to have email and password as well. Mail, I'm going to have um, password. Okay, so this will be first name. This should be email. I'm gonna just gonna edit this a little, and then this should be password. So the type here should be email. The type here should be password. Okay. Alright, so you can see we have um, these um, sorted out. If we want to have two, uh, if we just want to have uh, maybe two, two, and what we can do, we can do that easy. And what we can do is to say, um, classical to row, I can have another row here. Let's save this and see. We get okay. All right, so we can see we have this um, written out here for us. Um, what we can do um, to just give some nice pacing, I can do this div class equals um form group here. I'm gonna put this here as well. 
and I'm going to put this here as well. I'm going to put this here as well. I guess so you can see we have some nice um, spacing right here. So we have email, um, last first name, last name, email, password. Um, the next thing we should have is, um, I think we want to have a button element right here. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste this here, but then I want to have a row here. It should just give us some little spacing. Okay. So let's save this and see. Okay, so um, I don't want to have a password there. I'm going to change this to use a button element, button type equals submit. So here I'm going to have submit. Right here. So I'm going to call my bootstrap class btn, btn success. Um, right here, so and they will have this. Okay, so if we wanted to fill the whole, if we wanted to cover, what we can do, we can just call a class called form group. Um, form group. Here. Actually, it's form control. Call the class called form control. Okay, so we have it. But uh, I might not really necessarily want it to be this long, so I'll just remove the form control um, element here. Okay, so now what I want to do here, um, the first thing is to um, define a method which would be post. And action that should be registered for PHP. I'm gonna give all these names. So this will be name equals um let's call this F underscore name, this first name, name equals L underscore name, this last name, name equals um email. name equals password okay and this one give this name equals and submit okay i think we're good to go so we'll save this and just check out i won't really see any uh, much difference anyway so you just as it is so now what we can do we'll create a file called connect um, .php. So run right here, so click here, and that will hold our connection, our database connection. So we'll have connect um, the PHP right here. And so we have this. And so next what we want to do is to create a database. Okay, let's create a database. So to create a database, um, I'm just going to open this. I'll just copy this here. So we'll go to PHP Madmin. Okay. So I already have a database here called tests. I think I'm going to use this um, database called tests here. And to create a database is really easy. Um, I think you should demo. just click on this here. So give your database name. If I should create another one called test2, for instance, uh, just say create. And there you go. We have an entity database called test2. So maybe I'm going to stick with test two that I just created. And so next we have to create a table um, that we hold um, 
the values that we want to insert into the database. So to create a table, we have to look at the form first and see what we have um, there in the form. Um, so you can see here we have first name, um, we have last name, we have email, we have password. So to create a table, um, we'll just give the table a name. Let's call the name of the table users, for instance, um, column. Let's make it five um, here. So the first thing we'll do is to give this an ID. Um, type is integer. I um, want it to be unique. Um, so it's a primary. So we um, go to this here. So next, um, let's call this um, first underscore name. Um, let this be Vacha. Um, name shouldn't be that long. We can use um, um, we can use hundred um, for the length of this. Um, let's call this um, last underscore name. Um, this should be Vacha. Um, we can use hundred for this as well. Um, let's give this email. Um, this should be Vacha. We can use hundred for this as well. Let's give this password. Um, this should be Vacha. Since I'm going to hash the password, so I might use um, 300 um, for this here. So I want to have one more column added, which, which would be date and time. That's the date and time in which the um, submission was made to the database. So have this um, date time here, and this here will be date time, and default will be current timestamp. Okay, so when I save this, you can see we have our table um, structured out for us here. Good browse. We have first name, last name, email, password, date, time, and all. So we're going to write a script that will um, grab this data that we're entering in the form and submit it to the database, of course, using video and prepared statements. So next, we proceed to write the PHP logic for the connect um, PHP file here. So the first thing we'll do here is to write our PHP um, tag. Okay, so I'm going to do this um, defined call this base path. So this is necessary so that I do not want um, my my script database scripts to be accessed directly. So it's one of the security procedures. So here I'll just give a statement no direct scripts access loud. Okay, so next I'll define my hosts um, should be local host semicolon very important in PHP. I'll define, uh, I'll define my user. Uh, um, I think this should be root um, by default um, for password um, password is empty so I'll just leave it as that I'll define my database DB name um, should be the one I created which is test2 um, test2 let's check it out I'm here so you can see this test2 name of the database here So I'm going to define this variable as well. So I'm going to try here. So I'll call this my variable D same calls SQL host call my host file. And it should be DB name equals and it should be DB name <coughs> here. Okay, so I want to have um, PDA calls a new PD of. So I'll pass my variable here. That's my user variable. That's my password variable. 
So, Cpedio sets. Attributes. So, for the PDO. Attribute is cool. Air mode of PDO here. Exception. So hopefully, I think it should work out fine for me. So here I'll catch. Oh yeah, I have PDO exception. Uh, so I'm just gonna I call an error statement. Um, Connection fields. Uh, I'm gonna give some details about the failure. So I get past my error variable. Okay, let me get message. Okay, so hopefully this should work fine. Okay, so let's test this and see. I uh, will so save this thing. So up here, I uh, will call a PHP up here. So I want to require that file. So say require um, connect the PHP. Yeah. So let's just test this out and see um, what happens. There's something I want you to see. Let me see. You should probably see direct script access not allowed. Okay, so you can see because our script can, um, can just be called. So we need to pass in. Uh, well, I like give it a pass. I have to say. Um, okay, so what we'll do here on top, I'll uh, we'll say define. And here, uh, let's call this. Well, we pass their base path and so let's say true and so this should work out fine okay so we have it so hopefully everything should be working and um, let's be sure that it's working let's go to this script here okay everything is working there's no error um, being shown here all right so what we can do now is to write the code um, to grab those um, input from the form fields and submit them to the database. So that was through here. Uh, we'll go to our register, the PHP right here. Okay. So we need to check if the button is set. Um, so we'll say if it's set, um, that's this button here. The name is submit. So so we'll see if it's set. Um, dollar underscore. Call this post. Okay, let's call this submit. Yeah, so here we want to try. So we'll try this. And so we'll see dot DSN and then we call new PDO. Let's call this my MySQL host calls dollar host db name equals um, dollar db name now let's say um, dollar user and dollar password yeah. Okay, so next we'll say uh, the GSN equals um, actually, you want to do this set attribute 
to help parts of PDO. Okay. That's PDO as well. Let's have um, a mode on the score exception. Okay. So then we will grab the content. So let's give this a variable. Um, let's call this f underscore name. Should be first name. So we'll say dollar underscore post. We're using the post method, remember? So I think we'll give this f underscore name. Um, so we we'll call this l underscore name. So we'll give this, um, I think we'll give this l underscore name as well. So um, for password, let's call this dollar or email, email first. The post. So we'll give this email. And for passwords, call this pass. Uh, so have the post. I think we'll give this, uh, let's see what I gave this. Name equal to password. Um, I think I shouldn't list the pass. Uh, nothing wrong with password anyway. I just don't want to type it. Um, it's a much long grammar. So L name, F name, um, email, pass. Okay, submit. Okay, so I think we, we got that there. Okay. So I want to hash this password first off um, to make it um, more secure. So I'll say dollar pass. I mean calls. Um, I'll say password. Underscore hash right here. So pass my variable. Then I have um, password decrypt. Let's call this array cost um, error function cost 12. Okay, so that looks good. So next, what we we'll do? Um, we can check if the email already exists um, by doing this. I will just write a query. So the SQL equals. So I write a select query. Select and count. I apologize. I apologize if you can hear the um, generated sound. <laughs> so, so S. Let's call this um, num. Call this from. And the name of the table um, is users. I think so. Let's verify. I uh, want to verify everything so we don't want. I'm surprised. So users. So select all from users. Uh, so where? Email. So it calls them. Email. Okay, to so select count um, email as num from users where email is called email. Okay, so next we'll see, uh, let's call this to the statement. So the PDO, remember a, a, a connection variable. So say so prepare. Pass on the last scale here. So we're going to bind the variable, so the last TMT. Um, bind value mail email. So next we execute it, um, the last TMT executes. So what we can do, um, I can see here, I'm going to fetch the row. Uh, thank you, give a space here. Fetch the row, say the row equals to la stmt. Fetch. I must have a um, PDO. Fetch. Suck. Hopefully, uh, I made a mistake here. I think so. It looks nice now. 
so I want to see if um, this rule you know, is greater than zero. Um, if it's greater than zero, I can just what I what I will do. I'll just echo a statement. Uh, so a quick JavaScript um, real quick. Lots. Um, so I'll call this um, email already exists. Okay. Okay. So else I'll proceed and um, now insert it into the database. So what I can do here, I'll say the STM thing. That's if now if the username if if the email exists, there's a duplicate term email in the database. This message is shown um, via JavaScript or lots. Else um, the rest of the statement um, um, is executed. So I'll say. Um, this calls um, the DSN as prepare this here. So I want to say um, insert into I uh, was I think users is the name of the table. Um, so there we have um f underscore name. We have l underscore name. We have email. Uh, let's let me be sure of what I'm writing here. Um, so at first, I see first underscore name, last underscore name, email password. So um, I think this is first, first underscore name. This is last underscore name. This is email, and this is password here. Okay. So um, next, what I want to do here. Um, I'll close this right here. So I'll pass my values. Um, for my values, I'll have um, and for my values, um. Yeah, I think I should break this. I should break it from here so that we can all see. Here. All right. So for my values, what I'm gonna have here is um first underscore name, uh, last underscore name, email, and password. I'm right there. So hopefully that should do the trick um, for me. So what I want to do next here is unbind these parameters. So I'll say STMT. So I have unbind param. So the first one is um, first underscore name. So it should be dollar, dollar $f um, name. Um, the next one is um, um, I think it's last underscore name. Uh, I need to put this here. I forget last underscore name. Here um, should be dollar l name. So here. We have um bind param again. Um here we have email. Should do like email. And here bind param. We have um password. Should we do a pass? Not password now, pass. Okay. 
So I'm going to execute this. I'll say if um, device TMT um, execute. What I'll do, I'm going to echo and just when I echo this. Yeah, so here I'll just change this to registration successful. Successful. All right. So else, um, for my, should I try to? Um, okay. So else, what I'm going to do next is to say. Uh, or I can do else here so that I can get information as well. So I'll just um, see an error an error called. Uh, what what I what I can do? Um, let's do this. So I can get um, I can read the error message real. Uh, I can read it well. So I'll just create a variable here. And then pass it to JavaScript. Say error. Let's have them do E. Get message. Script a lot here. Uh, what I can do here. I'll pass in the error forever. Okay, so that should work good for me. So if I'm going to try, uh, I need to put a catch in here. So here we'll have a catch statement. Catch, so here. It's called PDO exception. So what E? Okay. Um, I basically want to do the same thing um, that I did <coughs> here. Um, so that I can get the error message you know here too as well. Okay, so hopefully this should do the trick. Um, so let's see, let's save this, Ctrl S, and go back here and refresh, and run the commands again. So, refresh here. So for first names below Saint Luke, uh, password. Let's put one, two, three, and um, here's password. No need to be selected to name. I think we forgot to add something. Let's go check it out, uh, real quick. Um. I think we're supposed to put equals here and connect to PHP here like this. So let's save this and see how it goes. So what we're going to do, uh, we're just going to do this again. Um, so main here. So for password, let me put one, two, three, and just do this. And we have registration successful. So let's go to the database and see um, what we submitted there. Uh, should be this one. Um, what we can do. Is fresh, so you can see we have the, um, the values inputted here. So I think that's why I left. Um, I gave this a size of 300 because I was going to hash the password anyway. So we have the first name lost in, last name lost in Luke. This is the email address, this is the password. And this is the time as well as the date in which um, this record was submitted to the database. Okay, so guys, that's it. So what we, what we want to do next is to see um, a quick um, display of how we can uh, do for the login uh, let's see how we can do that real quick um, here I apologize if this tutorial is taking long um, so here so what I'm gonna do is so this here and well again what I want to do here in this bootstrap page um, is to copy these two uh, I'm going to copy these 
here and I will go to um, I'm come here uh, I'm gonna paste it here right here I need to add the JavaScript dependence and uh, the bootstrap dependency as well so to do that I think I'm just gonna copy this one right here uh, I think this is the only one I need I might not really bother about JavaScript for now because I'm not really doing heavy stuff that involves some um, JavaScript display so set this to login uh, let's put this right here okay so here I'm gonna set uh, let's wrap this within a container so div class equals some container div here so I wanna have uh, this here again So that here, I want to put the uh, submit button. I'll just copy that. I'm already written it here for this registration. So I'm going to copy this submit button here and paste it right here. I can see that looks good. Um, so here I want to uh, do um, H2 login um, H2. Put it in the center class it calls and text hyphen sender. Okay, so hopefully this should work fine. Um, here should be um, email and password. Email. So here should be password. Password. Okay, so I'm going to give this a name of pass. I'm going to give this a name of email. I'm going to make this um, method it calls some post and action will be um, login the PHP right here. So let me save this and check it out in the browser and see how it works out. Um, I'm going to copy this. Oh, I'm just going to change this from here. I have login. Come on now. Okay, so here you can see it. All right, so we're gonna write a script real quick and see um, how that works out. So next, what I want to do, um, we'll come up here. I didn't call a PHP tag right here. And so we want to define our database as well. Let's call this um, base path so that we can have access to the scripts. Um, well, we can have access to the scripts here. So um, let's call this um, true. They want to require, um, I think I should just copy this from here. Uh, I want to require this here as well. Okay, so next. Um, I want to set a session to check um, if the user already um, logged in. Okay, so start. Okay, so what I can do next, um, uh, I'm going to define a session variable here so that I can just sort of make it um, accessible everywhere. So let's make it global. Let's call this user. Okay, so what I can do, you can say if is set um, the underscore post. Uh, I think submit I used there as well. I'm going to use the exact same thing that I used here. So permit me to copy this here and paste this here. Okay, so I'm going to say try. Um, so what I'll do here, I'll say uh, define a variable user underscore login. 
Ça, c'est... Euh, c'est un petit. Euh, email. Okay. And... Uh, Um, do this um, here. So I'm going to set some passwords. Attempt. So I'll see here as well, not empty. It's got post. I think it's past I use there. Pass um, for here as well. Um, and I'm just going to copy this and change the parameters to save time. Okay, so let's verify. I used pass, I used email. Okay. So, this all we want to do now is retrieve um, user account from database. Um, so, see so here's the retrieve uh, part of it. So, declare variable like SQL equals. So, I'm going to say select um, email password. Uh, let's see this real quick. Email password, okay. <laughs> so the email password. Um, I can just select all anyway, but I don't want to select all. Um, since uh, from users. Where email equals email. Okay. Okay, so next, um, I'm going to say dollar um, stmt to call dollar pdo so we prepare and pass um, dollar sql right here. So I'm going to bind the values now. So uh, it's a kid. So uh, I want to fetch row. Uh, okay, I think you should give um, this statement here. So this executes it, executes the query. So what this will do is to fetch the row. So I'll say dollar user uh, will be equals um, dollar stmt fetch. Um, Video this is all right. So I'm gonna check if it's false. Um so uh if row is false. So I can say if um Dollar user uh, is false. I'll just give us um, a lot script. A lot uh, so it's so invalid email password. I think I should close this here. Okay. So else, what I'm going to do next, uh, 
I'm gonna compare the passwords. So here, compare the passwords. So I can just say they were valid um, password. As it calls um, remember I hashed the password. So I need to do password and verify here. So I'm gonna pass uh, my password variable should be password attempt. Um, the user and here should be password. Okay, so I think you break is the next line so that we can all see. Okay. Alright. So I'm I'm gonna check if it's valid. So I'll say if um, the valid password this right here. If it's valid, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna set the session, and then I'm gonna um, redirect the user or echo my statements um, that I want to. Um, so um, I'm gonna set the session here. Um, the longest session. I'm here, so I'm gonna create. I'm gonna create another file. I think one more file. Just welcome page to something simple. So so that I'll redirect the user to um, that page. So I'm gonna pass my JavaScript. Uh, let's call this welcome PHP. Okay, so else I'm gonna say, I'll just copy this right here again and paste it here. Okay, so hopefully that should work out good for me. Um, since I'm using try, I need to pass, um, I need to put my catch statement. Let's see. So I send it to catch. It can be PDO. So now I'm just gonna copy the same thing that I did here. Um, So I wonder why this error. Okay, so alright, so let's go ahead and test this. But meanwhile, let me create that um, file here. Let's call this um welcome with PHP. Um Let's write something real quick here. Yeah. H1. It's welcome. Here. Okay. So and what I'm, what I would do here, I'm just go let's go ahead and test this and see. Um, how it works out. So here I'm just gonna refresh this. So the email is lost on loop nine. Password is one two three. I'm gonna submit this. Um, the parameters were bound. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Oh, I didn't bind my parameters. So what we can do here, um, I need to do this. It's called bind and value. This is another site. So let me pass my email here. Um, here and pass my do user login. Here, so let's save this and check this out. Um, we should be good. So here, yeah, so one, two, three. Okay, so there we have it, guys. And welcome. So if we want to pass the session to um, just a quick one. Let's say we want to display the user's email here or our details here. What we can do, um, uh, we can say, we'll just um, have this session here defined. Um, PHP. Um, so have a session here defined. Okay. Started. Um, so what we can say um, if is set um, another session user. Okay. So we're checking if the session is set, so we can see um, dollar underscore session user. Um, or we can just echo dollar underscore session user here. Let's make this global. Um, let's see what we can do here. Say dollar underscore session user. So here I can just concatenate this. Instead of doing this, what I can do, I can see a dollar user is equal to this. I just change this to dollar user is equal to this. So, so here I can just um, concatenate dollar user. And save this. Um, so let's go back um, and do this again. Um, so here, so we'll have one, two, three, it's password. Uh, oops. Oh, so this is user here. Uh, so let's go back uh, once again. Um, do this. Um, switch. We can fast. Let's call this one, two, three, and finger. So we we'll have a welcome. Lost and love nine. So guys, this is it. Um, how to use PDO and prepared statements to create a registration and login form. Um, so if you like this tutorial, give us a like, give us a comment, and give us a thumbs up. And subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more exciting content like this. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.